Okay, so first of all, I thank you very much for the organizers for inviting me to present today. I'm sorry, I'm going to keep your finger very busy because I did a lot of short slides. Okay, so um, I'm Stephen Laurie, and uh, from the Central National Data Analysis. Well, first time, yeah. So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about me. Now, the final problem we're trying to solve with RD Connect, uh, and how RD Connect is, is helping to solve these problems. So first about me, uh, I'm coming from the Central National Data Analysis Genomica in, in Barcelona, in Spain, and uh, we're the the Spanish National uh, Sequencing Centre, essentially. We're a, a publicly funded organisation, not-for-profit. Uh, we do all sequencing for the, the Spanish research and uh, community and health community at cost price. And now we're about, the, we're about 80 people and, and about 75% of us are on, on the informatics side. So this is just a quick look at our, our sequencing centre and uh, the majority of the work now is done uh, using the, the NovaSeq and the HiSeq 4000 machines. And, but we also have uh, three nano cores that we use mainly in, in projects related to uh, genome assembly, and we're supported by a HPC cluster. But I myself, you might have gathered, I'm Scottish, so before I moved to Barcelona, this is how I used to dress. Uh, and we have a few things in common with Japan, one of which being that we like whiskey. So next. So now I'm going to talk about the problem. So RD Connect is uh, the RD stands for rare disease. So uh, I'm going to talk about the problems in rare disease, which are primarily the bottlenecks towards uh, in, in moving data around, and the size of the raw data, and, and, and trying to solve the, the cases. So the first thing here is that uh, I have four slides here. So the first thing here is what is a rare disease? So a rare disease in, in Europe is, a, is this defined as a disease in which less than uh, one in 2,000 people are affected by that particular disease. But there are currently over 7,000, I think this number is larger now, uh, rare diseases. And th this means that uh, approximately 7% of the population will be affected by a rare disease at some point in their life. Let's keep going there. Which means that rare diseases are actually relatively common when you cluster them all together. So what are the bottlenecks? So there's a variety of bottlenecks, but the, the main thing is for each specific rare disease, uh, the, the patients are rare. Right? It's hard for clinicians to get a large sample of patients because they don't come across them very often. So this means that there's a, a lack of uh, cohorts available for doing trials. There's a lack of interest in general from pharma, tra traditionally, for developing medicines. Uh, there's a lack of cases to confirm diagnoses, a lack of genetic diagnoses in general, and a lack of data in general. So all these, many of these bottlenecks come down to data. Uh, there is also privacy issues, obviously, uh, privacy related to the data. Uh, there's a lack of infrastructure for data sharing. There's a lack of standards, which is something that obviously many people in this room are working on in general. Uh, there's often, unfortunately, reluctance to share data amongst the, the research community. And uh, in terms of small labs or hospitals, obviously, they have a lack of capacity to actually analyze uh, large, large data sources. So they rely upon other centers such as ourselves. And then, of course, there's a challenge to linking the data across different sets. So just in a very simple uh, way, the, the, the raw data here for, for a typical NGS experiment, if it's a whole exome, is about 6, gigabase, uh, six gigabytes. Sorry. Uh, and for a whole genome, it's about 70 gigabytes. Now, in this room, this may not seem like big data, but if you're talking about several hundred samples for, uh, for a, a a small research lab or for a hospital, this, this sort of size of data is still very large for them. Even then, once we have processed the data uh, to a large extent, what the researchers or the clinicians are dealt with, or would be dealt with initially, uh, is a list of variants that can, vary, uh, can range from 50,000 to, uh, for a small exome, to 4.5 million if they've done a, a complete genome. And for this, they are looking they are trying to discover, or we are trying to help them discover the single or the pair of variants that are responsible for the disease that, they are, that their case has. So what have we done within RD Connect to, to, to help solve this problem? So RD Connect was a six-year uh, European Union-funded uh, research project, and the idea was to build an integrated platform 
that connects the data, clinical information, uh, and including registries and biobanks, which I'm not going to mention more on today. And provide a central system that reprocesses, allows for the storage and analysis of the data, including full integration of phenotypic data and, and biosampling data. So this is the basic, this is the basic uh, workflow. The clinician and the researcher uh, has their sample, they sequence it at the lab of their choice, and then they, they pass it either to the EGA, which is the European Genome Phenome Archive in, in Hingston, or they can pass it back to ourselves. The point is that we use the EGA for our long-term archival of our data. And at the same time, they're filling in their clinical phenotypic description, and this all gets pulled together into the platform, and then they gain access to the platform which they use themselves. Next thing. And again. So this is our basic uh, standard analysis pipeline, so the standard sequencing pipeline, very much uh, common around the world. We use BWA MEM for aligning, we're using GATK currently for calling, and uh, we use a variety of annotation sources. Nothing special here. One thing is that phenotypes, which Orion has just been talked about, is, is fully integrated into the platform. And this provides deep phenotyping, as, as Orion mentioned, via the use of the Human Phenotype Ontology, developed by uh, Peter Robinson and Sebastian Koller. And an important thing, feature here is that the phenotypic information can be pulled directly into the platform and passed to other tools within the platform, such as Exomizer, which we have integrated, or directly to make matchmaking from within the platform. So this is our home page. One thing here, the orange button at the bottom. Uh, if you go here, you can actually try out the platform yourself, uh, or I can show you at any point over this week if you want to see how it works, but you actually have some real use cases in there. You can log in, it's free, and you can see all the, all the features that we have incorporated, or most of the features that we have incorporated. And again. So this is how the, the, the system has been built. So we, we have the, the various different modules, user registration, user management, which are controlled through, uh, through CAS for authentication. And we have a data submission module, and we have phenotypes, and these all feed into, gen into the genomics, the central platform. And then and from there we can make calls back out uh, and, and to tools such as Exomizer through APIs. This is the, the platform architecture. This is not my speciality. We have a very competent uh, full-stack developer, uh, David Epicia, who, who put this all together. So essentially what I give to him is a, a multi-sample VCF, and he pulls it into a Hadoop file system for distributed storage. It's reformatted into uh, tables using Parquet. And then uh, through ETL, it goes back out into uh, Elasticsearch. And this provides us with, with real-time queries uh, via the client. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it has, uh, when you log in, we have three parts. We have the, you define the samples you want to look at, you define the filters you want to apply, and then you get your results at the bottom. Okay, and again. So this is where you define your samples. You put in your IDs. Uh, you can see there's a direct link to phenotypes there. And, and you define the mode of inheritance you want to apply. Uh, and we've made this very flexible so that you can you can look for any any types of mode of inheritance here. So you define it by genotype and we have various quality control measures. Then we have a range of filters. And again, please. Next slide. Yeah. And again. So uh, you, you have to apply a variety of filters to, to cut down from your several million variants to, down to your a short list, uh, hopefully in the, in the tens. And most of the fields have explanatory uh, phenotypes, so the so the user uh, can understand what they do. Uh, we also can generate candidate gene lists on the fly by pulling in the HPO terms from phenotypes, or uploading predefined gene lists, or making intersects of these lists. And again, and we also have incorporated runs of Homo zygosti. And finally, the results section. So here in the results, uh, we have many links. You, you see the color-coded results basically to make them easier to interpret uh, at first look. And also we've incorporated many, many links out to a variety of uh, tools and resources, both at the gene level and at the position level, so that you go straight to that gene in these resources. So you don't have to go in and uh, do any further searching. You just click out and, and see whether that gene might have been in, of interest to you. Next slide. And then we have a further results table that has extended results. Okay, so uh, 
this is just to say that RD Connect enables sharing both within uh, the system uh, for registered users and links out to uh, tools such as, as Matchmaker Exchange. So we're, we're part of Matchmaker Exchange now. We can link to Phenom Central and Decipher. And, uh, and finally, these are the... Uh, so this was a big, big project, right? So we just did a very small part of it, and these are the, the people who are involved. Thank you. Thank you.